Welcome to the Leader Smith Podcast. It is Twitter Tuesday, and today we're going to talk about bad leadership ideas and bad leadership quotes and just bad leadership. Stay tuned. In a world of incompetent bosses, micromanagers, and petty tyrants, you are listening to The Leader Smith. Now, here is your host, Darren Gertis. Okay, so I've thought about doing an episode like this for a long time. Since I started Twitter Tuesday, in fact, I thought, wouldn't it be fun to just find and isolate bad leadership quotes along the way? The problem was I didn't see a lot of bad leadership like, you know, somebody telling you to do something that was just patently wrong. Yes, there were inane things, stupid things like be yourself or follow your dreams or uh, haters gonna hate or stupid stuff like that. But there weren't like, you know, do this wrong thing to become a good leader. There just wasn't a lot like that. So but what I did here was I looked up um, hashtags like bad leadership or poor leadership or bad leadership ideas or things along those lines. And so that's what I'm going to spend time with today. So the first one is from uh, Stefan Security, uh, at Stefan Security, and this is on Twitter. Uh, he said, question of the Sunday debate is, how do so many incompetent people become leaders? <laughs> I, I could go on all day with that. There's a short answer. Um, there's a couple of short answers. One, people are Peter principled, right? They're promoted to a place where they're beyond their capacity. If they've had success, they're promoted. They've had success, they're promoted. Had success, they're promoted, but they're not, they haven't grown enough to be within their own capacity to, to do the job. That's one thing. The other thing is we have a system very often that's set in such a way that if you um, if you play the system's game, you get promoted even if you might not be the best person for the job. So sometimes and, and you know these the system incentivizes things like if you're a manager and you cut out so much fat from your budget, you're rewarded from above. Doesn't matter that you just you know lost people's jobs and, and didn't redeploy them. You just like let them go, right? So there's a system that um, rewards maybe not the best elements of leadership. It rewards efficiency. Some of the best elements of management, but not of leadership. Um, and there's a difference between the two. So there, that's a great question. We could go on for hours with that. I'm going to go on to the next one. The next one is from Femi Ade Aina at EJIBA underscore Prince. And it says Nigerians, uh, hashtag Nigerians, a great set of people plagued with bad leadership ends SARS protest. Okay, so I don't know exactly what's going on in Nigeria, but there is a lot of this on Twitter right now about Nigeria. But what struck me here was it's not just Nigeria that has a great set of people plagued with bad leadership. There are organizations all over the world that are great people plagued with bad leadership. And it's unfortunate because, you know, the leaders have this pronounced effect on people. And if they screw up, that means that you might lose your job um, because they screwed up. So uh, leadership is a, is a profound responsibility. And uh, only when we think about it as a profound responsibility does it does the enormity of that sink in. The rest of the time, we're, we're thinking about the perks and things along those lines. Okay, the next one is Doug Ford at Ford Nation. Uh, this is a meme about uh, Premier Ford, Minister Elliott, and Minister Smith making an announcement. This is in Canada. And um, uh, the, the uh, comment below was, you guys, so they're outside wearing masks. And the comment below was, you guys never wear your mask at an indoor presentation, but you wear them at an outdoor one. Bad leadership. And, you know, there's something to that. Hypocritical. I mean, if you're, if you're just doing it for the sake of the camera, that's not nearly as useful as if you're doing what you need to be doing the rest of the time. And it's not, I'm not talking even about the mask. I'm just talking about being a hypocrite in general. Okay, the next one is by Kevin D. Monroe at Kevin underscore Monroe, and uh, he had this this meme, and I've seen this all over on um, leadership memes uh, all over the place. And there's these stick figures, and there's an, an arrow. These these uh, six or eight stick figure guys are holding up an arrow, and there's a stick figure leader on top of it with his finger pointed forward, and you know that's to emphasize this is what leadership is. And Kevin Monroe says, uh, it reminds me of a modernization of the old slave ships where the boss commanded the crew uh, to row. But it comes from this guy, uh, Per B. Bergen, at 
P E B B E to B. Well, that's a mouthful. Okay. And it said, uh, the, the original commentary said, I stumbled upon this image in the category leadership. I think, though, the right image could be the opposite uh, and said servus savorum. And I think that's uh, Latin. Um, so service and savorum are both Latins of the word servant or slave. And uh, I think it's saying that servants serve. I, I think that's what it is. Um, I'm, I'm, I, I only have dabbled in Latin. I've, I'm almost through Henley's first year Latin. Um, service of Orem. So servant serve, I think is what it's saying. And he said thoughts. So yeah, you know, it would be great if the leader was actually holding the arrow <laughs> rather than being held up on the arrow. But um, yeah, I, there's something off about that image. I think uh, that's a popular image of what leadership is, but I think it should be revised in, in many ways. Um, okay, next one. This is from uh, Stress Judo Coaching at Stress Judo, and it says bad leadership quotes. <laughs> and I like this one. This is one of the few bad leadership quotes that are out there, but they know it. Uh, it says together, uh, team, T-E-A-M is an acronym. Together, everyone achieves my bonus. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. There, there's so many ways that you can bungle um, leadership acronyms and uh, things along these lines. I, you know, together. I think it's. I think this is being tongue in cheek. But if you're really trying to uh, use this, don't just just don't. <laughs> it's just bad. Okay, next one is um, this is at being Kagorian at b e i n g c o r r i g a n, and uh, he's talking about Egypt's. Trickly president can't handle criticism, and he has plenty of critics. And there's a quote by Abdel Fattah al-Sisi, the president of Egypt, who said, I do not give permission for anyone to speak. <laughs> okay, um, that is a definition of a dictator. But you see that in organizations too. And whether they're saying, I do not give permission for anyone to speak, or whether it's just implied or understood, you better not speak out of turn, that's being a dictator. Don't do that. <laughs> so um, while the context was in organizations, this is exactly how it should not also work in organizations. I mean, it should, you should not have that. If you if you uh, don't let people speak pretty soon, they won't tell you those things that you need to know. So don't act like that. And, and the tendency is to act like that in order to get your way faster or what you think is more efficient. And it, it, it backfires. It's just, it's bad. It's, it, there's nothing good will come out of um, stifling um, people's ability to actually tell you truth. And if <laughs> once you squelch truth, all kinds of bad things happen. Okay, I'm, I'm belaboring that. Let me go on to the next one. Okay, so the next one, there's a series here. I have two, four, six, eight, ten, uh, 10 or 11 of these. There, I found this thing called the anti-leader, at anti-leadership. Um, and the guy posted, whoever this was, anti-leader, guy, girl, I don't know who it is, uh, posted on anti-leadership in 2016 and then just stopped. Like they got off tw uh, Twitter. But I was just, I was dabbling with different hashtags of bad leadership, poor leadership, terrible leadership, anti-leadership I tried. And I got this. And so they were out there and it, their symbol is a, a chess uh, king on the board and all the other pieces scattered around it. Um, and they were just saying like things bad leaders would say, like the first one was when in doubt lie. <laughs> okay. Don't do that. Once you, once you destroy your credibility, your once you, uh, show yourself to be dishonest, all kinds of bad things happen. We can't trust you. We don't know if you're talking, telling truth to us because we know you've told, told truth to other, or you told um, lies to other people. So you just, you destroy the foundation upon which you stand. So when in doubt lie is terrible advice, but this is supposed to be terrible advice, right? This is the anti-leader. Uh, the next one, everyone you lead should know how you take your coffee. <laughs> uh, and it struck me like, you know, actually, if you know how your people take their coffee and, and, and even better, you've brought it to them occasionally, that would be good leadership. So this is a good example of anti-leadership. Like, you know, you should know how to serve me. Okay, so the next one says responsibility flows down, recognition flows up. Like, look at me, I'm important, recognition, right? No, give your people recognition. You need to make sure that, you know, 
I, I can't tell you how many times I hear from my students, um, you know, well, I had this boss who stole all the credit for what I did or that kind of thing. I'm like, you know, this is so common. Why don't you just give the credit to your people? Then you look like a good leader because you're giving credit to your people who actually did the work and you had the, had the good sense to help them get there, right? take you don't don't take the credit directly but but be proud of them and let them take the credit and it it reflects back on you it's amazing how that works but just give them their credit okay next one the anti leader again never pick up your own dry cleaning <laughs> um, so I guess you're too self-important to have to do that. Next one, a, a great leader holds a, ha a handshake way after the point of comfort just to let the other person know he's serious about greetings. Okay, yeah, don't be manipulative. Don't be a jerk like that. Next one, never finish what you start. <laughs> Next one, when somebody brings up a concern, cut them off in mid-sentence. Point at them and say, I hear you, and then quickly change the subject. I, I, actually, you know what, that one, I, I've known people that were like that, that have done those kinds of things. Like, no, you didn't hear anything. I, I didn't even get to the point where I was trying to say what you, I was trying to get communicate and you cut me off. What are you thinking? You're an arrogant jerk. Don't do that. Okay. Next one for motivation, hold actual carrots in front of your subordinates. <laughs> That uh, cracked me up because, you know, we're talking about the carrot and stick model. How What a terrible model of uh, leadership, carrot and stick. Like you're going to, so the metaphor is that you're on a, like you're riding a donkey and your whole, or a horse and you're holding out a carrot on a, like a long stick with a, uh, with a string on it, like a, almost like a fishing line, the carrot right in front of him. He can never quite get to the carrot, but he keeps trying, he keeps going after that. And then that, that whole word picture mutated to, uh, you know, the, the carrot is the, the incentive and the stick is you beat them with a stick if they don't take the carrot. Um, so for action, for, so for motivation, hold actual carrots in front of your subordinates. So you're an animal and I'm going to treat you like, here you go, here's a carrot right? <laughs> I mean, what a terrible, terrible thing for you to think of your people, people made in the image of God, people that are made a little lower than the angels, and you treat them like animals. But it's that's terrible. Okay, next one, never let your team know your true expectations for a project until an hour before the deadline. Yeah, that'll keep them on their toes. <laughs> Don't do that. Um, make sure everything's crystal clear ahead of time. I, I know of people that are bosses that have been in positions where they try to be, um, they try to make themselves uh, an enigma, confusing to their people so that their people just work extra hard in order to please them. Don't do that. Make your make your expectations clear and let them work toward those expectations. But don't, don't make it extra hard on them under the theory that they're going to work harder. Um, the, the theory that you have about leadership is going to have a, a significant effect in the results that you get. And uh, the way that you treat people is very, very important. Okay, next one. When in doubt, always play favorites. Now, most people wouldn't say that, but people do that. And that's the problem. Some people actually do that. They play favorites all the time. And playing favorites is infuriating, whether it's a parent and a child or whether it's the boss and a subordinate, because everybody else sees it. And it and we have this... Um, unfairness detector and when you when things rub up against the unfairness detector we just we cringe okay don't do that okay last one from the anti-leader a great leader prominently displays awards and recognitions for subordinates to take note of <laughs> yeah yeah okay you pompous jerk don't you know or look at look at what i have how smart i am um and no you, you are, so it's not a it's not a bad idea to have those awards or recognitions that's okay but if your attitude is so that every so it's on display so you see how awesome i am you're not that awesome if you need that you know covey talks about this like if you never um never borrow credentials from anywhere right like never borrow like so he look covey had a doctorate he wrote books but he's what he was saying was never rely on well because i have a doctorate that's why because i wrote this book that's why no your idea should stand up on its own not because of the certificates or the re, uh, awards that are on the wall don't don't let that don't borrow your strength from them let let your the force of your idea be from the force of your idea. Okay, so the anti-leader was a lot of fun. There's a lot more of the anti-leader. Maybe I'll do a whole episode on just that. I don't know. Um, but yeah, you know, it turns out 
there's not a lot of like really bad ideas. There's some like mediocre ideas out there like that are just, you know, be yourself, that kind of thing. But there's not a lot of really bad leadership quotes. And I guess uh, if there were, they just wouldn't be retweeted. Um, so I, I kind of struck out a little bit there, but I found some interesting thoughts. And, and I hope that all of this will help you think through what it means to be a better leader, even when you're thinking through the examples from the anti-leader. Don't be like that guy. Be the kind of leader that you would want to follow. Hey, thanks for your time. If you enjoyed this podcast, please consider subscribing. Tell other people. We want everybody who can be a better leader to become a better leader. Thank you.